If Elon's ships will ever fly to Mars, it's because China says, I'm making this up, but let any of them say, we want to put military bases on Mars. Bada bing, we're going to Mars. We are going to Mars, and you know something? NASA doesn't really have a ship to do that. But you know who does? Elon. So he rolls out his Mars ship, and so, tax money pays Elon for us I, to get to Mars, and it's not on his dime. It's I'm not gonna, on his I'm initiative. To, I, I, I get it, but I'm going to disagree in part here, Please. because the fact of the matter is Starship has been built on his dime. It's been no, built. No, but it hasn't on, been launched. Yes, because it's been, it's a, it's been it, launched. It's been launched three times not not successfully. Mars. Not to not, Mars, but the capability okay. once it working has the capability of refueling and going. And I hope that NASA and does. What I'm telling you is, yeah. What I'm what I'm telling, yeah, all there. What I'm saying is that as a Mars program, the cost of that goes beyond any venture capitalist interest in handing money to Elon, even his own money, unless he does it as a one-off, as a vanity project. And holding vanity projects aside, if his ships take us to Mars, it's because you're my tax money as voted in Congress for our geopolitical defense to protect our space interests against adversaries. You know, that's what's going to unfold know, here. And knowing him well enough, he will spend every one of his last dollars making a mission to Mars happen, even if the government doesn't want it. In fact, you know, I remember I was yeah, that's with a, that's a one-off vanity project. Well, that's but it, what? Listen, a lot I, don't, of times, I don't have a problem with that. You know, I'm just the, saying, don't the, tell me it's a business case. The for, no, it's not a business case. It by no means. This is a backup humanity vision for him. Now, that wasn't the conversation I wanted to have with you. Uh, because I'm not a huge Mars fan. I mean, I love the idea of going to Mars and finding the life that's sub, sub yeah, me soil too. there. Me too. But, By the way, but, the, this idea that it's Mars, the, the idea that it's Earth 2.0 is, is that has serious flaws in it. I'd be happy to chat about that with you if we have time, but continue. Yeah. So the point is, when we talk about where does humanity expand to next, right? Uh, if we're going to start to see millions of people, not thousands of people, millions of people in space, where, or when I say in space, beyond the Earth's surface, where are we going to see that? We'll see some large populations of, of scientists and researchers on the moon, maybe some vacation spots on the moon. But I think it's unlikely to be on Mars. My bet still is on the vision that, you know, Gerard K. O'Neill painted of large cylinders built from astronomical materials, at this point built by robotics and AI autonomously without humans in the loop, uh, sort of creating um, ideal environments for us to go into uh, and move into without having to worry about all of the issues of getting onto and off of the Martian surface. Yeah. So let me just um, say some supportive things of what you just said. The Gerard K. O'Neill model, mm -hmm. as you noted, uh, has the advantage that you park one of these at a Lagrangian point or somewhere in orbit. And so it itself does not have much of any of a gravitational well. So you just sort of slide up next to it and disembark. And since it's rotating as a rotating cylinder, everybody lives on the inner surface of that cylinder and it's rotated to 1G. You don't have the bone loss problems or any other health problems related to lower G as you would have on the moon as you would have on Mars, which is uh, those kinds of challenges were thoroughly explored in the TV series sci-fi story Expanse. If you look at any Expanse episodes, um, there are the people who live on Mars, there are people who live on asteroids, and their bones are weaker, and they can't travel from one place to another because they were born and raised in these different uh, sources of gravity. And Earth in that mix has the heaviest gravity. So the Earth people tend to be sort of sturdier than everybody else. So there's been some sci-fi people have thought about this. It's completely bypassed when you have a rotating system. So the question would be, um, how idyllic will you make this such that everyone will just want to go? Will it be like, oh, the new world is so amazing. Everybody get in a ship and board one way and you'll get off and you'll never come back. Is that what you foresee and in how much time? Yeah, so I, I do foresee 
uh, one-way missions. Um, in fact, I, you know, I've done this in the lecture halls at universities, typically for uh, young graduate students in early 20s, asking how many of you would go on a one-way mission to the Martian surface. And you know, before they're married or before they have responsibilities, the percentage of, of hands that go up in the audience is pretty large, uh, close to 50%. By the way, there was the, the Project Mars One. Do you remember yes, that? I do remember. Baz Weinsdrop was the entrepreneur. He's Dutch, which was interesting because I said, how does a Dutch person get involved in this? And then I realized there was the Dutch East India Trading Company. They, yeah. they were early out of the box in this, let's explore the unknown uh, business. And of course, they have since gone out of business, even though they had many supporters, many funders. Uh, we had, I had Baz Lundstrup on my podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in our archives. And the, uh, we interviewed one of the people who did sign up. He was a young, kind of geeky guy, liked science. And we asked him, I, and I said, um, so you really want to go one way on this trip? And he said, and he said yes. And I said, uh, aren't you married? And he said, yes. Well, what is, and I said, what does your wife say about this? <laughs> And he said, oh, she's encouraged it. <laughs> and I said, okay, you don't understand what's going on in your marriage. <laughs> good, good riddance, good riddance. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I, I get that. But, and maybe Elon with his, you know, starship is, that's a first step. But to say we will have robotic AI, mining asteroids, building colonies, enough for all, all of us to move there and live there. On what time scale are you imagining this? By the way, George K. O'Neill imagined all of this by the 21st century. Yeah, he wrote his books in the mid late 80s, and uh, uh, so well, I, I thought he was I, even I, earlier. Than, was it? I think it was earlier. Uh, than high, high frontier. High frontier was earlier. It was in the mid 70s. You're right. He yes, wrote, yes, he okay. wrote uh, uh, 2008, think, 2080, 2084, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is his follow on. I mean, I I see this occurring in the next 30 years. Uh, which might be completely ridiculous on your time scale, but I think that the abilities to do this um, will be there. But here's the point. If we go to Mars, there are two scenarios. When, when we go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> when we go to Mars. Mr. Optimistic Man. Oh, come on. Okay. Do, you, do you think there's... A, okay, listen, the, uh, you know, we could end as a species. That's true. But at uh, some point, somewhere. If we go to Mars, it's because the military forces of the world required it of us. Okay, I think you and, I, you, and I will continue, you and I will continue to differ on that point. And, yeah, and, but I have the evidence of history on my side. You, you have wishful thinking on your side. That's the difference here. That's all I'm saying. Uh, we, have, we, have exp we have individual explorers who have who've, uh, charted paths. Yeah, yeah but... But going to Mars is not an individual explorer. That's a trillion dollars right there. A trillion Even dollars. A, hundreds of billions of dollars. So that's me, not me, private so money get, making that happen. I'll tell you, I'll remember when I was with Elon on a particular day, he was extremely glum. And I'm like, why are you so glum? And he goes, just figured out that Falcon 9 cannot get us to Mars. And he said, I have to stop and I need to build something bigger. And Starship was designed not for the lunar program. It was designed for going to Mars and retrofitted for the uh, Moon Mars Initiative. But how do you fund this thing? And uh, Starlink um, is his venture uh, to fund this thing. How do you get a trillion dollars in value? You plug into a large consumer base engine, economic engine, which is communications. And I think he's doing pretty damn good. I'm not sure. I actually switched to T-Mobile on this uh, on this note. Um, so he's very got, loyal of you. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Well, you know, the idea of communicating over over Starlink is pretty cool. 